when the dog is hungry or needs to go pee pee or poo poo. These children, they're not really bad, most of them. Just products of rotten neighborhoods and bad family situations. I think, you know, elements of what bands are about is sometimes about explaining what their ideas are because they're sometimes not 100% clear. I'm a great believer in that in the record should, should actually say everything, though. I'm a great believer in you shouldn't need a subtext explaining records. But I think that by talking about things, you can give another side to things, which maybe people haven't thought about. I think it'd be pointless if we were sitting here and you wanted me to explain anything about the songs or anything like that or explain what they're about or why they were, you know, because because you know, a song should just work or it shouldn't work, and if it doesn't work, then it's failed. The Beatles and David Bowie and the Kinks were the originators of Britpop, <laughs> and I think Suede relit a torch that had been sitting in a cupboard for a while. I felt it was, it was really important for us to make a record that, you know, we weren't making under sort of conditions of, of, of com competitiveness because we had made virtually every single other album under these conditions of everyone thinking we were going to start and it was really it was quite liberating to make a record where you're not sort of you know people haven't got their knives out for you you know I, I, maybe i'm too sensitive to the to the press and that but it, but it is difficult when you there are you know it does seem to they do, you know there are seem, it does seem to be a lot of people out who have it, have it in for you but you know that's probably paranoid <laughs> We're just a pop band, really. We're not kind of like a cult band or an alternative band or anything. We just make sort of pop records, records that people like. Nothing very complicated. This record, we don't, we didn't set out have an agenda of, oh, you do this and we'll all do this. I think we all pretty much um, sort of expanded our roles in the band and stuff. And I think it's just, it's just the way that the writing has gone on this particular record. I'm sure it will change again. I think that's really healthy in the way. I'm sure that, you know the re next record will will, will change again and, and expand in different directions and different ways. It's good to keep it fluid. Yeah. I think, you know, keep life in in whatever direction you, you decide to move in, and, and keep keep your keep your mind open as well. You know, not not say this is it in any way. You know, say that you know this is just another phase of it, and then, and then we're going to move on to another phase. You know, I think that's what the, the the most the best thing about the recording process of Head Music was that it was. A, a very, a very democratic thing, in that you know we'd, we'd go in and 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 everyone contributed different parts. You know, it wasn't kind of, you know, for the first time there's a song on on, on an album that I didn't write the lyrics to. Neil, Neil wrote the lyrics to Elephant Man, and it's important to just to sort of say, you know, if it's a good song or if it's a good sound or if it sounds good, then then use it, rather than be too uptight about it. And I think you know, you've got this certain certain uh, there's just, there's certain times when you have to destroy your ego when you're making music because because you know. The, the, the only important thing is making a good record. It doesn't matter on the on the on the on the costs or the consequences. Making a good record is everything. It's a misconception about the band that there's one creative force at work behind it, and, and it's just not true. You know, it's the, the the way we work is so universal these days, and so much of a free for all. You know, that everything, every record we do, um, be it more experimental than the last, or more, you know, or longer or shorter than the last. <laughs>
balance of things. It's like it's just a strange one. We had to re-record it about six or seven times. It was really infuriating. We wanted it to sound a certain way, and we had a certain sort of blueprint in our heads that we wanted it to sound. But we just we just couldn't get it to fit, and so we had to just try and try again. We had to we were trying to turn it into something it wasn't. So it ended up as you can hear it now, which is pretty much straight down the line, pop record. What provokes any shift of, you know, in, in anyone creative? It's a matter of, of, of throwing out the old and bringing the new. And, and, and that's, it's, as long as it's new to you, it's new. You know, that's the most important thing. Keeping yourself excited about everything, you know. The last thing you want to do is, re is, rewrite, the, is rewrite the same album again. <laughs> Probably with the best life band in the world, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's not. I'm not being arrogant. I, think, I just think that our, show, our shows are pretty exciting. You know, I mean, I don't. You know, and barring things going wrong, you know, which occasionally they do, which you can't really account for. But you know, I think. Yeah, you know, I think we're pretty good. Could have had it all. Could have had it all. Could have walked in the sky, but just stayed right away. I must say that Sway is one of my favourites, so I'm going to take the whole group and we're going to see the Sway concert once again and we're going to be topped off and we're going to be ready with it. It's just, you know, it's just, it's banging, you know what I mean? It's just like, you just have to go along to anything going on and it's just really exciting and mad and really special, you know what I mean? There was a real special feeling in the air. Anticipation, insanity, drunkenness. Got it all, haven't it? We had a good, really good festival season. We kind of like, I think we got onto a new plane of playing live. We sort of like got, I think we got, you know, really give it some live now. And we're kind of like, we've gone from, quite a sort of, uh, I suppose, sometimes reticent band to sort of being kind of quite um, in your face, I think, now. You know, I think our live show's pretty good. Sort of like, I think a lot of, there's a lot of fear because, you know, you're not 100% confident in, your, in yourself as a performer and actually I, I don't have any fear anymore. It's all, it's all, all it is is just adrenaline and it's just pure enjoyment. I, I really enjoy playing live, it's a good laugh at the moment. I've not enjoyed it for, this is the most I've ever enjoyed it, actually. I'm a bit worried because I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want Sway to just be a live act. I think that's a really dangerous situation when you're just seen as a live act. And you know, I think there's certain artists that, that, that who are seen in a much better live than they are on record. And I, I think it's absolutely essential for us to to, to convert our, our live energy into our next record. So I mean, while we're on tour, we'll put everything into it. But as soon as we go from the off tour, then we'll be in a different mode. Making an album is always a, a real struggle. It has been making records has always been quite difficult because it because because it's worth it. Do you know what I mean? It really is. It, I, I mean, I love making music, and the biggest kick out of it is when you actually get it right and it sounds really good. So that, there's nothing. There's no better feeling than when you rewrite something you really love. It's great. <laughs> We've always gone in to the studio with very preconceived ideas about what songs are going to go on the album, what songs are going to be B-sides. And I think it's, I think that's been to our detriment sometimes. I think, you know, we've thrown away really good stuff. And I've, I've kind of like wanted to let things just grow a bit more this time around, be a bit sort of freer. And a bit more experimental. Not in a, I don't mean experimental like, like, you know, people use the word experimental as in a kind of, it's a style, do you know what I mean? With lots of weird noise. I don't mean like experimental like that, but actually truly experimental, actually trying to, do something that your mind doesn't naturally kind of like arrange itself around. Rat down, down the bottom when it's really growling and filtering at the right point, sort of like accidentally. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to hear that more throughout the track. Yeah. So it sounds really good when it feeds flat. Yeah. I can just I can hear it being sort of just the whole sound being at more edgy still, more sort of menacing. But I think we should we should have a track have a track for this. But it's good as well. 
Do it again without the boxing gloves. What? Do it again without the boxing gloves. Yeah. Anyone that lets it lets technology use them or is a, is a, is a slave to it, then it doesn't it hasn't understood the the purpose of it. It isn't to, it isn't it, 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 you know it should be used as a stick or something like that that you use it to poke something with. There's 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 no point in letting it take you over. Taking shots at the enemy I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything I pop off with the new rock Electronic, blow the sonic roof up I'm too honest when I take a few shots They're too toxic, need to take a new song We wanted to make a record, the last but We wanted to make coming up with, with someone other than Ned not because I, th I found anything wrong with Ed's work at all. It was more of a case of I thought that, you know, it's time for a change, really. And, and because we'd had a lot of lineup changes, I thought maybe we should carry on with Ed to keep a strain of continuity. And then, you know, I thought everything was going pretty well and stable and that. And I thought it was just time for, time for a new, new set of ears and a new brain. And, um, you know, Steve was, was the sort of person that I thought was, was right for the job. You know, he's like... I think he'd worked with, with dance bands and rock bands and stuff like that. He did a really great version of Savoir Faire on the album, uh, which, is, which ended up as, the, as a version pretty much. Um, we just took him to a studio. He just, you know, if you heard the original demo, it's like nothing like that. It's, you know, it's very crass in comparison. And he did, just injected an X factor, which I wouldn't have been able to do on my, on my own. I don't think any of us would have been able to. I mean, giving it something or is it you know and and using someone other than Ned was was a good good sort of like step for us growing up you know it's like moving into long trousers rather than short trousers you know? A lot of groups now, they're on their, who started at the same time as me, are on their fifth album. They're still in the group, they're getting tired and jaded, it's all the same. They're just trying to please their fan base and they're just trying to put out records the record company will like and, you know, and sort of don't really know what they're doing. And the beauty of what I do is that I can do what the hell I want because I always have. And I've always been criticised for making crazy decisions, but at the end of the day, I think I'll be praised for, for doing that because I'm the only person who's learned. 94 was a really hard time for us because it was, uh, you know, Bernard had left the band and, and Richard had joined and like, we were getting a lot of flack from people and people, because we had such a lot of excitable, positive press before, people suddenly saw, uh, you know, there was a reason to, to have a go at us and it was a hard time for me personally and professionally, um, but it was something you, have to, you just have to learn to get through and I've experienced so many ups and downs now, it's almost like, you know, it's like a gauntlet you've got to run and kind of like, I'm pretty immune to anything now, really. I feel pretty strong. But, um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard, but I mean, you know, it was, it was one of the greatest, greatest things, you know, getting, you know, getting Richard and Neil in the band and, and, and making probably the most exciting album of our career so far, which I thought the coming up was, and I was really excited. <laughs> Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so late You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall I think Richard
Richard is, you know, he's a really good musician, and he's really, really important to the band. It's, it's what you, whatever you might, whatever someone sitting outside would imagine it to be like. That's what it's like. You know, it's no different. It, you're joining a big band. It's, it's kind of, it's a big band. You know. Except it's what can you, what can you, what more can you expect, really, than, than what's what? happening? Five years playing, 20 years hanging around. It's 96, and as we took um, a couple of weeks off at Christmas, um, then I went away and wrote, um, just did a demo of a song which I gave to Brett, and he, uh, and the, the song turned into Star Crazy. So I think that was the kind of time, uh, it, if, until then I was really just sort of hanging around the studio and sort of playing along bits and pieces, and, and I think it was over the course of recording that album, it's, I ended up being in the band. It was really quite a slow thing. I ended up just being a sort of um, somebody who play along in rehearsal rooms and, and maybe come along on tour and sort of and just fill out the sound live. And then as the, the, the recording of that record carried on, it sort of, I got more and more involved in, in the band. So it's, it was it was quite a long process. But I suppose early in 1996, I think when I felt part of it. What do what does Suede offer that other groups don't? A free holiday. Youth opportunities. <laughs> a plastic dinosaur. I probably feel a bit more comfortable with the press because, because I know I've had so much experience of it, and so I've had, I know how to deal with it more. But on the other hand, sometimes you think, oh, I wish there's another side of your personality that would come across, and it sometimes doesn't because a writer will often have um, a predetermined opinion of you and will often just push that opinion no matter what you say in an interview. And sometimes, you know, you're on TV, if you're talking, and you actually feel comfortable and natural, you can get a different side of yourself, of course, which you, you could never, you know, it's difficult to say. I, I think we're still learning to, to deal with TV. I think we are portrayed as being very, very serious. Because um, the sort of humour that's inherent in the band isn't, isn't, it doesn't particularly come across very well in the pages of a newspaper or an interview. Apart from Richard, we've all cleaned toilets. Yeah, we have cleaned toilets. I'm doing it now. That's true, completely true. No, I used to clean toilets. I used to clean public toilets. We're peasants. Those peasants. Yeah. Peasants. Pond life. Pond life. Pond life. You don't believe us, do you? You don't believe us. It's true, that is completely true. I used to clean airplane toilets, and that's even worse. I put my hand in a sick bag of toilets. It's true, that's quite enjoyed it. Are you still doing that, Simon? I do, actually. I saw you hanging around the public lavatory in Islington last week. Anyway, we've got a mop. We've got a thing over there. I'm going to do my sensitive solo song now. I'm kind of quite aware about my, uh, my voice, how it's distinctive. But I kind of think when it's your own voice, you just think it's normal, really. It's, uh, and some people say, oh, you've... You know, it's, it always surprises me when you, you know, people sort of... I hear criticisms of my voice, you know, from people, which you do sometimes, you know, I can't stand that bloke's voice or whatever, and it's like, yeah, I can see it's kind of edgy or whatever, but I don't think it's, I suppose it can be sometimes annoying. I've been guilty of being annoying in some of the songs, but I think you've got, you can't make an omelette without breaking any eggs sometimes, you know what I mean? You've got to sometimes polarise your audience, otherwise you just end up sounding like some boy band nonsense, do you know what I mean? You can't, you know, you've got some bland voice. Draw the blinds and watch the show Cut it on the radio Saw it on the news today Heard the lonely people say There's a great big crowd In the Union Jack There's a great big I've got a terrific enthusiasm for the next album. It's not like I'm, I'm actually I'm actually itching to make it. So you, you can never really tell until you actually start making it. What, you know, what, you know. I, I think that the next album is going to have a lot more creativity. There was there was points in because it took such a long time to make head music. There was points in it where where we stumbled into inertia and stuff. And I, I don't want to do that again. I want to keep everything exciting. And no, I'm, I'm dead excited about the next album. There's a great big crowd in the Union Jack. In the Union Jack. <laughs>
<laughs> what a bunch of losers. What a bunch of losers. <laughs>